This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the last lecture on uh, share options, uh, and it's uh, primarily to do with what we call the Delta Hedge. Uh, and I did say in the last lecture, um, when we talked about the Greeks, I said two things. That firstly, if you look at the formula for the call option, uh, the major things, of course, are the current share price and the exercise price. And that from day to day, share prices are going to change. And so from day to day, uh, the formula, PA in the formula will change and the call option will change as well. But I said that in the short term, the other factors... Obviously, in the longer term, the other factors can change, like interest rate, time to expire, and so on. Uh, but in the short term, the other factors are likely to be constant. And if they are, then that bit of the formula, <coughs> again, in the short term, <coughs> won't change. And so the bit that's going to change, as the um, share price goes up by a dollar, if that last bit stays constant, if the share price goes up by a dollar, the option price goes up by a dollar times ND1. If the share price goes down by a dollar, the option price will go down by a dollar times ND1. And so we can use that fact, as I tried to explain before, to hedge. And to explain, look at example five with me. The current share price is a dollar fifty. And jumping to the bottom, Martin owns a thousand shares. And of course, uh, if Martin owns a thousand shares, in the future the share price may go up. Great, but there's always the risk the share price might fall. He's at risk. Whether it goes up or down, there's risk. And a way of hedging against that risk is to deal with in call options. And we know that the exercise price is 118 in three months. The risk-free interest rate, 10% per annum. The standard deviation of the rate of return on the share is 40%. Now this time, I'm not interested in calculating what the option premium is. But what I am interested in is, yet again, if share price fell by 10 cents, what would be the effect on option price? It would fall by 10 cents times ND1. And so let's calculate ND1, uh, which in fact you should have already done if you had to go to example 4 yourself, as I suggested. Uh, but yeah, well, if you got it wrong, we can check. First of all, what's D1? Um, it's log to the base E of the um, current share price in cents 150 over the exercise price 180 plus R, the rate of interest, 0.1 plus 0.5 times uh, the time to, I beg your pardon, 0.5 times the volatility, the standard deviation, which is 0.4 uh, times the time to expiry uh, is three months, quarter of a year, 0.25. Uh, divided by S, the uh, volatility, the standard deviation, 0.4, times the square root of the time to expiry, 0.25. Which gives us um, 150 over 1, uh, sorry, log to the base E of 150 over 180. is minus 0.1823, and remember ultimately the sign's going to matter, plus, well, point, if I start from the end, point 0.4 squared times 0.5 plus point 0.1 times point 0.25 is point 0 0.045 divided by 
the square root of 0.25 uh, times oh dear, square root of 0.25 uh, times 0.4, which is 0.2, which gives me d1 at minus 0.1823 plus 0.045 uh, divided by 0.2. It's minus 0.6865. Uh, I want n d1. So we want n off to two decimal places, minus 0.69. Uh, and remember uh, that we always look up the sort of positive number first and then adjust. And I'm trying to find my normal distribution tables. Here we are. Uh, that if I look up 0 0.69, 0 0.6 down the side, the 0 0.09 column, I get 0.2549. But I stressed before, and it's written at the bottom of the tables, uh, because d1 was negative, we subtract the answer we get away from 0.5. Uh, and so uh, d1, and d1 becomes 0.5 minus 0.2549 equals 0.24. Point two four five one. Now then, see if you can think of what the rule's going to be, uh, but then learn it. We know that the call op the price of the call option will be the share price times N D one. minus all that extra bit. And if we assume that everything else is going to be unchanged, if all the extra bit stays constant in the short term, then as PA, as the price of the share changes, if it, uh, so too the option price will change. But again, if the share price fell by 10 cents, the option price will fall, but it'll fall by 10 cents times 0 0.2451. Well, as share price falls, we're losing money. I'm going to deal in options in order to make money if there's a fall. As I said, we'll sell options now if the price falls. Well, we're going to buy them back later, and if the price falls, we'll make a profit. But our side problem is, of course, all right, we've got a thousand shares. If the price falls by 10 cents, we lose a hundred. But if we have a thousand options, okay, we'll make a profit if the price falls, but the profit would only be 24.5% of a hundred. The two won't agree. How can we make sure the profit on the options ends up being the same as the loss on the shares? Well, we deal in more options. How many more? Since it'll only fall by two cents for every ten cents the share falls, ah, five times as many options. The number of options we'll deal in, we will sell well, we have a thousand shares. The ND1 is, what was it? 0 0.2451. And therefore, we'll deal in uh, the nearest number 4080 call options. Share price falls by 10 cents, we lose a thousand times 10 cents. Option price falls by 10 cents, uh, sorry, option price falls, 
by not 10 cents, but 2.451 cents. We sold them. If we sold 4,080, then we'll make a gain of 4,080 times 0 0.2451. It'll cancel uh, the loss on the shares. And we call that a delta hedge. And the rule, although I hope uh, it makes sense what I've done, um, the number of options. We take the number of shares that we're at risk on. And we divide by the delta which is N, D, 1. Uh, there is the delta hedge. Sell call options. Sell them now, buy them back later. Okay, I mean, the problem is, of course, in the short term, as I've kept saying, uh, the option price will change by the share price times N, D, 1. Uh, but in the longer term, everything else is going to affect it. Uh, T, R, everything, yes, all the other things are going to affect it. And so in practice, dealers keep, keep needing to recalculate this delta hedge. And I mentioned before, there are formulae to help them relating to um, uh, theta, um, vega, rho. Uh, they have special calculators with them built in. They don't sit um, doing all this business. Uh, but they keep needing to readjust the delta hedge. But that's not your problem in the exam. Uh, two final things, uh, very quickly, but uh, don't affect the calculations at all. But you'll see um, section 8 says it refers to styles of options. Uh, and the point is, there are two styles, two types of options that are available. Uh, there are what we call American style and European style. Now, it's something to do with where they bought and sold. So, you know, in, in Europe, you can buy American style options or European style options. Uh, it simply refers to the way they work. With European style options, um, you can only exercise on a fixed future date. So if they're three-month options, you can only exercise them in exactly three months' time. On the other hand, American-style options, you can exercise at any time up to a fixed future date. which makes them more flexible. You don't have to wait the three months. Exercise whenever you want. Uh, and as a result, they are more expensive. However, it's only for the written because the formulae that you're tested on, the Black Skulls formulae, uh, only relates to European style options. So any options you're doing number seven in the exam will be European style. Just be aware for written um, that American style options exist. Uh, finally, just a tiny bit of terminology, long and short dealings. Um, these words, in fact, apply to any uh, dealings on the stock exchange, whether it's buying and selling shares or here buying and selling options. I said that, that since we're talking about options, I said that with options you can buy now and sell later. Options are traded on the stock exchange you can buy today. Obviously, most of our work has been done assuming we then exercise them, but you can sell them if you, know, if you no longer want them. Uh, and that's called taking a long position. 
I say buy the shares themselves. You can buy shares today, obviously, and sell later. I hope the price goes up. You're taking a long position. I also said, though, in the case of options, when we were talking about this Delta Hedge business, but equally with shares, it is possible to sell now. You can sell shares or options that you don't actually own, but you have to buy back later. And of course, that's attractive if you think prices are falling. Sell at today's high price, buy back at a lower price later. Well, selling now and buying later, we say we're taking a short position or we're selling short. And so although I've stuck it in the uh, options chapter, it relates to um, shares as well. A long position, you're buying, you're going to sell later. Short position, you're selling, you're going to buy later. So there we are, finally we've got to the end of that chapter. However, the next chapter is again options, but instead of looking at shares, how it can relate to investments in projects. You'll see what I mean in the next chapter.